Hello? Is this thing on? Well, welcome to another video of Making the Game Song Ringer. Man, it has been a heck of a moment just trying to get this going for you. Um, I can't figure out how to get my old software to work. It just keeps crashing every time I load it. Game show. So I'm back to OBS. Streaming on this software, which has probably going to have my voice out of sync. And has some weird issues where I can't record my desktop audio. But anyways, I'm trying to make a freaking video for you. So I hope you appreciate it. God damn it. <laughs> Joking. Alright, anyways. What I'm working on right now is getting Songbringer running on iOS. And uh, luckily I've done the hard work part where um, I got all um, all the build working so basically what I've done is I've created a separate project from the Mac project it just helps to kind of keep everything in two different projects because it loads faster and it's a little bit easier to keep them more contained so this project just has an iOS target and um, important things to do were to set up uh, the base SDK the deployment architecture um, the build path, I had to customize all that up and I, I remembered um, this thing about Xcode where you can, in order to set the actual, um, hold on a second, is my, is my audio even working? Let's make sure this is working. Hello? Okay. Yeah, in order to set your a custom build path, it's not enough to go and just change your product's build path. You actually have to override it in this sneaky project settings. So you go to Xcode's file project settings, and then you can actually set it to a project relative location. And that's how you actually do a custom build location. Right now I've just got it set so it only does dwarf, so it doesn't build a DSIM, which takes forever every time I have to try and build. There's some weird issue where um, if I try and do, if I compare floating point 1.0 to another floating point this 1.0, it returns false in debug mode on iOS for some reason. So I'm gonna have to figure that little issue out. So that's why I'm running in release mode only. Um, this deployment target was really important to set there. Um, I had to get a whole freaking libraries going. So libraries for um, Cocos 2D were crazy. Having to, I had to rebuild it like four or five times until I got Cocos 2DX built right. Um, but anyways, what, what was, I was trying to basically get it so it would have bit code enabled because it's something that apparently makes your apps more efficient once they get uploaded to, uh, Apple's app store server. It can serve up like ARM 64 versus ARM 7. Um, so, but after tons of all that work, like just trying to get the bit code in, built into the Cocos 2DX libraries. I found out that it libraries that the Coco City X depends on can't even be built for aren't aren't built for bitcode, so it just fails. So basically, like Live Ping, for example, isn't bitcode. So even though it's packaged into another library, it's packaged into another library. It's finally packaged into Songbringer. Songbringer, if you try and build it with bitcode, it fails because of that one sub library. So, but anyways, let's talk about the good news, yeah. The good news is it's actually running. It can actually run on my device, which is freaking hella cool. I got my little my iPhone 6 here set up, running, and it actually runs in the simulator as well. That's pretty cool. So let's focus on the positive, yeah? Um, here's Songbringer running, and um, I got this weird, like, I'm working on a virtual D-pad right now. Um, the basics of it are all working, like it can access menus, um, it, and I got the even the save and quit working, and the main menu, and all this stuff. So, okay, so let's continue work on that virtual d-pad so I've got my entire environment set up for Mac development here which means that um, uh, like if I try and build here it's just gonna build the Mac version 
So basically, I'm going to code here in my normal, comfortable environment of Vim. But then I got to switch over here to Xcode to run it. And it's hella slow compared to Mac development. Like, even launching the game in the simulator, which is the fastest, is hella slow. If you try and launch it on the actual device, it's super hella slow. So, patience is of utmost importance. All right, so let's do this. You can see I got some code already started. Things are tweaking. But basically I'm doing a virtual D-pad thing where you can change the position of the virtual D-pad based on where you tap. So right now I've got it set so whenever it starts a touch it moves the virtual d-pad to where you started touching which isn't quite right it doesn't feel right at all so it needs more like a touch start pause I'm just gonna keep coding here code without thinking too much I forget what a touch has in it what functions and methods a touch has you can get the location Location in view. Okay, you know what? I've had a hell of a day so far and this is gonna be complicated to try and move this virtual D-pad position. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just comment this out for now and work on the simpler stuff. Give myself a freaking break. Okay. So there's the A, B buttons. There needs to be a X, Y buttons as well on screen. There's the pause and um, gear buttons. Start by making those smaller. Those actually have empty space baked into them?
Let's see if I have a Photoshop document already set up for this. Swoopian. I don't think I do. Let's create something here for it. Yeah, let's just create a document for this. Can't be too hard. I guess this, these could all be the same image actually, but eh. So this is kind of like leftover art from a different project. But I'm just using it for now. Let's make one more version of this with um, Just a circle.
We make all these layer based slices. I think these AB ones are probably not even going to be used because I want to just fill them up with items. But then again, maybe it does need the A and the B in the background just to kind of like have some kind of indicator of what they're mapped to. that Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, Songbringer has its own pixel art font, but it was based on Robo, I think, sort of. Let's just, call, let's just use Robo to start with. Let's do a color overlay of white on all these to make it um, just uniform. We can color them in, at runtime or whatever we want to do. Yeah, cool. So you got a color overlay there, and that, now it's pretty easy to just copy that style, paste it on, and even like. Yeah, cool. How do we merge the style again? Mer Rasterize layer style, there it is. And we can make this X color also. 
white. All right. layer okay so next we need a little pause icon we might as well make like a settings icon too even though I'm not sure if those will be used but yeah yeah let's just make them anyway they'll be smaller maybe half the size
Where the heck is Arial Unicode? Is it maybe at the end? Oh. <sighs> Time to stand up. Take a little break. Man, am I lazy or what? I don't even want to like draw a pause icon right now. up Thailand.
Ah. Semicolon. Web dings. All right. Just so if we can get like a little wrench icon too. What the heck? Oh, we wanted this to be the map anyways. So like a gear icon. Oh yeah, like the the of course the gear icon, duh. <laughs> oh man. Today's got me going crazy. Shouldn't even be trying to record a video. Just stressing myself out. Um gear icon. It's like, where's Waldo? She was on Google the other day. Where's Waldo, Google? Guess I could just download a gear. So that's like a sunshine almost a gear lightning bolt That's super cool. Five and a quarter inch floppy disk icon. So awesome. You'd think this four fonts worth of stuff would have a gear icon. There's like a, what is that, a magnetic tape type icon? It's like lotus flowers and yin yangs. But not a gear. Well. Okay. Let's just get a freaking gear icon. Yeah, that's all I wanted. Something like that. This one or this one? Fine. I'll take it.
Okay, good enough. Let's get these named and exported ASAP. It's called button A. Button B. Button X. Button Y. Button D. Yeah. L, button R, button U, button, okay, gear, let's call this one button pause, okay. Can't have the background while we're doing this. Let's clear out the existing buttons. Hold on. Let's confirm that button A wasn't. Okay, no, it wasn't. What? Button B. Oh, neither of them were? That's really weird. Oh well. Can't wonder too much about it. I was I thought they had baked in some empty space, but I guess not. Okay, let's um Export that, make sure this all exports correctly. We're gonna put this in sheets, buttons, only user slices, please. Save that out. Make the hell sure it works. A, B, D, gear, L, pause, R, U, X, Y, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That should be able to build that sheet at least. Cool. Okay. Now, all right, let's get this to be a select icon. The select is the gear one. I mean, start is the pause one. Both of those are a little smaller. Now, really confused as to how this select and start button has got to be where they are both like in this I don't know it's freaking boggling my mind let's just run it cool set up to run that all right whatever run it See, oh man, it's so weird. Pause and the gear, they're both like almost the same position here. This one's this X minus 41, and this one's X minus 42. That doesn't make any sense. They should be on top of each other. Oh, this is Y plus, Y minus. Oh, and that's plus and minus. Oh, I see. So there's some little position for that right there. All right. Okay, I get it now.
let's go ahead and um, let's just copy over my whole save game that I'm always working on. I think that would give me a good sense of familiarity. <laughs> you like the tone of voice I just had while saying that? All right, saves.txt, let's get that opened up. Let's copy over this save text. So we don't want that. We want save, we want this whole awesome saves here. Copy all that stuff. As soon as we save it, it'll convert it back, but that's all right. We should be max FPS 30 because this is running in the device. Oh, anything else we want to do? Skip? Any pause would be great, but I don't think we could do that. Window size doesn't matter. All right, let's run this again. In fact, I don't even think we need to. Let's just run it here. I don't need to build that. Nice, check it. Okay. Let's customize that a bit. Um, put them at zero. I mean, there we go. Just, uh, it's not going to reload or anything. How do we... Uh... Oh. How do I pull up the... Okay, what next? Um, okay, so these gear and pause buttons. Let's just put one in the top right, one in the top left for now. So, I think they can both go on the top right. I 
Minimize that. Yeah. Okay. Top right. So select would be the leftmost start would be the rightmost one. Optimize. Says pause. Optimize. Oh no. Man, iOS development is difficult to love. Oh, hey, nice. Those look, look about in the right place, except that your thumb is probably going to be too. You need to space those out a little bit more. Nice. These look okay, but yeah, space them out a bit more. So much needs to happen, like these buttons all need to disappear when you're in menus like this. When you're in menus like this, also the buttons need to disappear because you can just click, you know. Cool the game works though. Run away. And it does actually run fast on my iPhone. It's just a simulator that's super slow. Okay, so let's space those out just a little bit more.
Let's see if five's enough. All right, hey, let's wait another 60 seconds just to run it, huh? Gosh, I love desktop development. Been spoiled for the last three or four years. Spoiled, not having to wait to launch. Hey, at least it's a lot faster than trying to launch it on a device, though. I think I need to actually try this with my thumbs. See if those are too close together. They look visually all right. Oh, I get distracted. Oh, actually, these do work, all right. Oh, yeah. working okay cool those are about right let's leave those as they are um so we need like an a b button and an x y button as well so that kind of means all these buttons need to be half as big the a b x y ones at least Just about everything could stand to be about half as big. This is already at retina resolution. Make it show it disappears. These all these disappear whenever the game is paused.
Yeah, let's, let's pause it. Let's, yeah. Okay, so. I have a check for this already somewhere else. It's not that one. It's a different kind of is paused. Now, This of conspector. So other methods can use it. Oh, this is is this it? Oh yeah, that's it. It's part of it. Whatever. All right. Flux is okay. Flux is paused. Return. See what it's like there. So don't even process any touches while we're in pause phases. Pause fluxes. Oh, it's a wrong build. And iOS version. best you can. Hard to do touch controls. Make it make it feel right. Flux? You don't have flux?
Time to take a little nap while it runs. I need like something else I can do for one whole minute at a time. It's like Man, it's like it changes the way my brain is wired. Having this minute of distraction so often throughout the day. All right, look at this. Okay, Let's see if we pause. Nice, look at that. It doesn't process these touches either. Cool. Hey, that worked. You go into settings and still there's no buttons on screen. That's cool. I go back, I continue. Nice. Oh, but Oh, we have to turn these back on now. And we need some way to get out of this menu too. Start by turning them back on. Come on, brain. I know you were distracted for a minute there. It's so hard to get back in and out of these mental gears, but you can do it. You got this, brain. Hmm. I guess we're just going to turn that off. Heck, are you gonna remap? 
Yeah, the whole gear menu needs to be just kind of like rethought, basically. So for now, this will work, I guess. Just hide all these buttons. Sweet. Cool, this is a big step forward. So A should be like more down. A should be the one that's down. B should be the one that's up there. I guess we should get an X and a Y button here too. Make them half as big for a moment. Now let's put A and B on the bottom, X and Y on the side. And we know the start looked pretty good. Spaced by about 25 X. Let's put you at wing size dot width minus same kind of thing as um, Pause button, just, just 25. You're gonna be zero plus, okay, so that would be, these are there and those are there. We wanna just kinda shift those up a little, maybe shift these. No, no, dang it, okay. That's, that's. 25 to hit the center, plus some padding makes 70 over there. I guess it would be 70 up there too. Okay, let's do kit. Let's kit that with 70. Same this one's 70 plus. Um, 30? Okay. Now 
x and a inside that width minus kit scale. Both of these are at kit scale 25. This is b would be 70. This one's 100. See if that is somewhat right. We also need to make it so when it tries to touch. A button we need to make sure that, that this might work at first. It depends on if this get bounding box function is set up to recognize scale it might it might actually recognize scale Dang, messed those up a bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, X and Y aren't set up yet? Oh. Duh. Let's make this into a for loop. It's really cool, isn't it? Okay, and let's get those positioned correctly. A and B 
Oh, duh. This is only supposed to be minus. Oh. That's right, yeah? Um, I'm just going to guess. My brain is not, obviously not working very well right now. Stress will really do you, do it, a number on you. I don't know why I'm so stressed today though. I don't know. I guess I, it's, it's got to have been all the problems I've dealt with all this iOS little. Oh, it's just the frustration of it all. Programming. It's not always shits and giggles. Okay, there. It's looking a little better, but it should be more like 60. Nice. So those are overlapping. Oops, son of a. Get that running again. Alright. So it's like maybe more like 60. And maybe the B button can be a little higher. No, let's not do that yet. While we're at it, let's make all these um, Make the D-pad a little smaller, and then set the D-pad pause.
Hmm. Let's make those smaller too. Don't ask. So the A and the Y probably can go a little farther apart. Maybe another five. Oh, and these, this, the Y. Didn't that work? Oh. Wow. Okay, so A can go at least 105, if not Whoops. See how fast that was? That's how I'm used to developing. Instantaneously running it, practically. This is going to require a lot of patience. That's what it is. This, like, impatient feeling. It's stressing me out, just waiting so long. Causing my mind to just get distracted in weird zones. How the hell did I develop BioS games in the past? This is like infuriating. It's a little better. We had the HUD working a little better. We're gonna need to put these icons here, like the sword icon will go on this A button. The you know, bombs will be here on the B and all that. Okay, let's try that out here on the iPhone. And I think I'm going to have to call this a day. It's about all the iOS development I can do in one day. But luckily, it's only one day, right? I can get through this. It's not that bad. Not bad of actually progress wise. I mean, I got the A, B, X, Y buttons on there. Hopefully, they're in the right place. Okay, let's see how this performs. Yeah, I mean, that's cool.
I guess the D-pad can be a little more adjusted. And I wish the D-pad was more of a virtual D-pad. I wanted to update it. But yeah, the D-pad's really weird. It's not feeling right yet. That'll be tomorrow's task. Get that D-pad. Like, it should change its center point. Like, so the D-pad can adjust to where your button, your thumb is just... You can forget about where your thumb goes. You know? That feels pretty good. I mean, I'm clicking these A, B, X, Y buttons over here, and there's enough room for me to hit them, and it's really no issue at all. The HUD too. So the HUD needs to be really custom developed for iPhone. I'm thinking Oh yeah. The HUD. I'll have to think about it for a minute, because I kinda wanna adjust all the buttons custom so like it'd be some kind of mode or where you can just drag your a button somewhere else and stuff shoot you could actually put an l and an r button up here on the top left You got enough room. Huh. Huh. Okay. That's kind of a good idea, actually. Maybe it would be cool to put the L and R buttons back in there. It would change the whole game. You can actually play every button as it's meant to. Huh. Or maybe L could be up in the top left and R could be in the top right. And you could have the pause and settings right next to those. Shoot, I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, anyways, anyways, I'm happy with today's progress. Let's see, about, let's just check it in, huh? Why not? Get rid of this unused code block. These two. Uh, I want to remember that I needed to take those out. Okay, let's see what we've changed. Did we only change really input mobile? Oh, we added these buttons. Interface D11. Let's get this uh, back to how it was. Building more without the D sim or with the D sim. In release mode. And that will. That ought to put us back to how we were there, and we can just yeah. So we added two files to the project there. You can check that in. Switched up these buttons, and then input mobile got updated a lot. And then I'm not gonna even review all that. Okay.
Okay, so I'm probably gonna go with a different look. I'm gonna go with a, a pixel art look, actually. I might not. I might keep it like crisp like this. To just to differentiate that this is not the video game, you know, this is not the pixel art of the video game. I don't know, that kind of makes more sense maybe actually to leave it as it is. All right, that's all she wrote for today. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope it turned out all right. Sorry I'm in such a poor mood today. I wonder if my voice is even in sync. I'm saying something. <laughs> Usually OBS doesn't, doesn't like keep my lips in sync. And I wish, I wish the freaking desktop audio worked. If the desktop audio worked, this would be like a I could actually use OBS and just deal with the whole lip sync issue. Tried everything. Gone in here and like modified my pro audio properties, advanced audio properties, tried every kind of combination of settings. I've tried using uh, um, Soundflower. I've gone into settings and changed up the uh, the overall audio settings nothing nothing works to be able to record desktop audio for some reason on OBS Mac and it was this way in 2015 when I started using this software three years later this is the newest version 21.1.1 still can't get it to work oh well anyways thanks for watching sorry I'm such an asshole today but I appreciate you and and your and your viewing and stuff. <laughs> oh man. I'll catch you next time, alright?